Uh, get ready. It is a short chapter. It won't be a short teaching. So you're not going to get off that easy. <laughs> Both Leviticus 17 and 18 deal with how the uh, Israelites were to offer their sacrifices and their worship to God. Uh, God is now going to instruct them on how he wants to be worshipped. See, the problem is the Israelites had embraced the practices of the pagan nations around them. Uh, this is really all they knew. Now think about this, that uh, they had been in slavery in Egypt for over 400 years. So uh, these Israelites, that's all they knew. They were born in slavery. This is the first time they've ever uh, seen anything or experienced anything outside of Egypt. So all they knew was all they knew and what they had learned when they were in Egypt. And what they learned in Egypt were the practices of the pagans. How that they would offer their sacrifices to the demonic gods and goddesses. And remember now, the Egyptians had plenty gods, <laughs> plenty goddesses. And the way that they would worship these gods, with a little g, was very sexual and very musical in its nature, in the way that they would worship. And so this is what God is now going to instruct them on. And he's going to teach them, really show them, and even command them how it is that he desires to be worshipped. It's only been really less than a year since they had uh, been delivered out of Egypt. So now that the Israelites are out of Egypt, God has to get the Egypt out of the Israelites. Now, I know you know that in typology, Egypt is a type of the world. So too, as the Israelites were delivered out of slavery from Egypt, we're delivered out of slavery from sin, you see. So Moses was their deliverer. Moses a type of Christ. Jesus is our deliverer. So Egypt is a type of the world. And is that not true how it is for me and you when we come to Christ? Now, we've come out of the world, but now the Lord has to get the world out of us. And that's essentially what he's doing here with the Israelites. See, still fresh in their minds was the demonic worship of the golden calf. Now, the golden calf was an Egyptian god. You know, it's interesting to me that whenever there's an archaeological dig and they find some relic from some ancient, you know, uh, civilization, you know where they go to authenticate it? The Book of Mormon, of course. <laughs> that was pretty bad, wasn't it? Of course they don't go to the Book of Mormon. You know why? In fact, you know, there's no archaeological find whatsoever that would document or authenticate anything that is written in the Book of Mormon. These secular scientists, you know where they go? They go to the Bible. That's how they authenticate an archaeological find. And this was the case. And the New York Times a while back had an article about this golden calf from 1550 B.C., that was unearthed. And they uh, said, quote, historians and archaeologists believe it was the animal, this golden calf, that was the object of worship, the central object of worship. Because see, the calf represented their deities. Remember now, the Egyptians had frog gods, uh, no relation to Farag. That's a whole different... Uh... <laughs> My dad was Egyptian and Farag is an Egyptian name, but no relationship. But they worshipped the, the flies. They worshipped the, the insects. And that's why when the plagues, when God sent the plagues, what God was doing was he was saying, uh, you like to worship frogs, do you? Have some frogs. <laughs> He was showing his supremacy over their gods, their false gods. And see, now this is what God's doing. He's saying to Israel, I want you to worship me in a way 
that is worthy of how I am to be worshipped. What's the theme of Leviticus? Holiness. I am a holy God. And when you worship me, you do not worship me as the Egyptians worship their gods. You worship me as the true and living God. And that's what this chapter and really the next chapter in chapter 18 are about. So let's pray. Ask God to bless this to our understanding as we get into his word. If you would join with me. Verse 1. Lord, we need for you by your Holy Spirit to be our teacher tonight. Lord, we need for you to give us eyes to see what it is that you want to show us tonight. Lord, we need for you to speak by the Holy Spirit in that still, small voice. Lord, we need for you to minister to us. Lord, give us understanding. Lord, speak. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, verse 1, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron, to his sons, and to all the children of Israel, and say to them, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying, Whatever man of the house of Israel who kills an ox or lamb or goat in the camp, or who kills it outside the camp, and does not bring it to the door of the tabernacle of meeting to offer an offering to the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord, the guilt of bloodshed shall be imputed to that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. Verse 5, to the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices which they offer in the open field, that they may bring them to the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting to the priest and offer them as peace offerings to the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood on the altar of the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting and burn the fat for a sweet aroma to the Lord. So the Lord is saying, this is not only how I want to be worshipped, this is where I want to be worshipped. You cannot worship me wherever you want in any way you want. You cannot approach me on your own terms. The way you approach me will be exactly this way and in this place. And if you do not, you will be cut off from the people. God takes the worship of him very seriously, and he's going to give the Israelites the instructions and the commands as to how it is in the newly built tabernacle that he will receive their worship of him. Verse 7, they shall no more offer their sacrifices to demons. What? They shall no more offer their sacrifices to demons. You mean the Israelites were involved in demonic or satanic devil worship? Yes. It goes on to say, after whom they have played the harlot. This shall be a statute forever for them throughout their generations. Also, verse 8, you shall say to them, Whatever man of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who dwell among you, who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice, and does not bring it to the door of the tabernacle of meeting to offer it to the Lord, that man shall be cut off from among his people. Again, this is how I want to be worshipped. This is the way I want to be worshipped. This is where I want to be worshipped. And I will forbid you from continuing to worship demons as you have heretofore. You bring it to the tabernacle. You bring the sacrifice to the Lord. It has to come to and through the high priest. And you're going to stop worshiping demons. Or if you continue to worship in the way that the Egyptians worshipped, you will be cut off from your people. Verse 10, And whatever man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell among you, who eats any blood. I will set my face against that person who eats blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Therefore, verse 12, I said to the children of Israel, No one among you shall eat blood, nor... Shall any stranger who dwells among you eat blood? 
Whatever man of the children 